that brings us to our next email, which is from uh, Anne Marie from Rush in North County, Dublin. And uh, Anne Marie has uh, talked about her puppy that's biting. He's constantly biting. Now, it doesn't bother her so much, but it's when her, her children, her young children, and their friends come in and the puppy's grabbing their legs. And some people think he's biting them, but I mean, I know he's just grabbing them. He's just trying to be affectionate. So, how, how, how do you deal with that? Um, how, what's the best way there? Yeah, okay. The, the, the puppies will mouth or, or mm. bite for two yeah. reasons, okay? The first okay. reason is uh, if they are excited and they want to play. So, mm. you know, like the caller or the emailer has described, they've actually, uh, it's with the young children. So usually that's when the kids are running around and excited. The puppy they chases and grab, exactly. They grab the, the ankles and, and grab at the children and jumping. Um, so that's the first reason. Mm. The second reason a puppy will actually bite is when they're trying to be handled, when the owner or somebody's trying to handle them and the pup doesn't want to be handled. Um, so they'll actually struggle and try and bite down to say, no, let go of me. Okay. okay? So in this case, it's, it's a, more of an attention seeking. Yeah, it seems uh, like it because yeah. it, it doesn't seem to be, um, there doesn't seem to be any aggression or that there. It just seems that he's just trying to get. You know. Yeah, exactly. And people, but people worry about that. Maybe, oh, if my pup is, is doing bite? this now, is he ultimately yeah. going to become aggressive later on? And the answer, um, in most cases, ninety nine percent of cases, is not. Okay, that this is just an attention seeking behaviour, normal for puppies. Okay? okay, but obviously it needs to be dealt with. Mm. Um, it's the optimum time to teach what we call bite inhibition because it's happening a lot. It allows us to handle it regularly and gives the puppy a lot of opportunity to learn that this is inappropriate. So we would do two things. Firstly, we would um, manage the situation so the children are maybe a little bit calmer to avoid hyping or getting the puppy very hyper. But when the puppy does behave in that way, we would time out the puppy. So we like... Um, the children will be taught to maybe make a squeal sound to interrupt the behavior. So like, oh, okay. something like yeah. that. Okay. And then they must stand up, stop moving, fold their arms and ignore the puppy for the next kind of 15 to 30 seconds. OK, which means that for the puppy, when they behave that way, all the fun ends. And so the reinforcement, the original reinforcement it ceases and stops. And so they come to learn that and they, come they to want learn. to play. They okay, must play right. play by the yeah, rules. Yeah, play by the rules. Um, cool. But it's also important. Uh, it's it's important not to over rely on timeouts or or that type of uh, yeah. approach. We also need to train the puppy to maybe sit when the children run around and make sure to reward appropriate behavior as well. And then ultimately, you'll see more appropriate behavior happening where the pup maybe sits and watches. And then ultimately, then um, you'll get that over the biting. Terrific. Um, now, and that brings us on to our final email, which is about um, health, and back, which is basically what, what I'll have to say about it, which is vaccinating, exercise, warming, and uh, feeding your dog. Now, vaccinating your dog is, uh, there's seven in one, distemper, hepatitis, parainfluenza, parvovirus, and uh, leptospirosis, and hepatitis. Now, that, that it really is essential once the dog is six weeks of age that he is vaccinated and uh, he can get his follow-up vaccine then in the primary course at 10 to 12 weeks, and that, that is essential. Parvovirus is very prevalent, and leptospirosis, which um, the rats will spread, and like they're, they're everywhere. And the thing is, you don't have to be in a dirty area or have a load of dogs around. The pups can pick up um, the infections just walking the street and, uh, and, and, and that, you know, so, so that's essential. Um, worming, once the pup is two weeks of age, give them their appropriate wormers for young pups and give them every two weeks until they're three months old. And then after that, every three months. And uh, yeah, there are two reasons for this. One, it's warming your puppy so that he's healthy, but also for children and people handling the pup, it, it, it reduces the risk of them becoming contaminated. Uh, so that's a major um, incentive, let's say. So fleas and mites, there are spot-on treatments you can use, and uh, they, they would be particularly during the summer, spring and autumn, the, the, the uh, latter half of spring and the early days of autumn as well. But the worming, the vaccination and the worming, they, they, they're, uh, they are very important. Because now, there's that issue of um, when people, uh, you know, children, the, the ball goes into the feces yeah. and they can touch their eyes and go blind. Isn't they that can, from worms? They can, yeah, yeah. And, and there are certain stages of the worm cycle uh, will migrate and, um, and 
travel can they can find out in the eyes yeah. and uh, there, there are a lot of serious issues now mm. it would frighten the life out of you if you really went into it but it's a simple case of worm them every three months regardless they don't have to you, one you won't see worms in their feces if, if if they often if they don't if they have worms you're not always going to see the worms two um uh, they don't the dog doesn't look have to look wormy as mm. such he can be the best looking dog but he, he just has some worms mm. so that that's that's very important um feeding there are a huge range of dog foods and most of them are really really good and uh, stick to puppy puppy food in the early days if you've got big giant breeds uh, stick to, to to their um particular foods because they have specific requirements you know they've got a lot of growth and 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 that you know happening over a short period of time and uh, particularly in the joint development and yeah. and that so so it's it's important and follow the the directions on the bag because sometimes when you're feeding your dog and um, i know myself I, I had a tendency just to pour and say yeah that looks like enough but then when i started feeding them as per the directions i find i'm feeding them half as much and he's satisfied and they're not losing weight you know they're in good shape so feed what it says on the tin because you know it's a bit like the fairy fairy liquid ad where you, you, you yellow pack you, you'll use twice as much and but you'll pay twice as much for the fairy liquid but you're getting the value and, and that's that's what it's about. So finally, exercise. Exercise is something for young pups. They, 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 their pup, they have exercise, just run around the, the room here. They have, you know, I mean, I have a Labrador pup who's six months. I mean, running around the garden is plenty for her. You know, I'd wait just about a year and a half or so, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, before I, serious I, that, exercise. Yeah, I mean, even in, in agility, people will have seen that on Crufts where they're going over the jumps and mm. the seesaws and all. I mean, it's a year before they start learning any of that, those pieces of equipment because the plates haven't fused. They haven't that fused, correct? that's yeah. right, yeah. So, and the I joints mean, haven't. It can I do mean, damage, yeah. I mean, yeah. hips, hip dysplasia is, is relatively common. Mm. I mean, you, you don't x-ray a dog you know to, to 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 assess a hip until he's at least a year old so things just haven't as you say fused yet yeah, so yeah that's it. but getting back to the behavior and exercise you know the way um for older dogs and bringing them out on walks and all that it's a huge it has huge input into the behavior of the dog mm. and uh, would you what would you suggest about you know that element of be uh, sort of so socializing a dog or or just keeping a dog happy I mean, when you can't obviously bring a six-month-old pup for a five-month, five-mile walk. Yeah, absolutely not. Is it just well, playing? Or, yeah, or? you can have um, doing some training with your dog or playing mentally stimulating games um, is 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 equally Beautiful. as important because that's their mental well-being, and it depends on the breed. Certain breeds will enjoy certain things more than yeah. others. For example, if you have a terrier, and there's a great little uh, tip. Um, say it's called a badger box and you literally get yourself a, a cardboard box and um, cut a little hole in it so that the, pu the pup or the dog can gain access to it fill it with lots of shredded paper few bits of um, food that they can go in and okay. forage around and for a terrier who is originally bred to so go to do that, to do yeah, that it's a great thing to mentally stimulate them tire them out in particular on a rainy day where you don't fancy going out for a walk you know mm. and they'll do that they'll rip up the box and they'll have a great time um scenting games scenting. for 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 gun dogs you know any of the gun dog breeds um putting out, out little just bits of kibble around the house yeah. and they have to learn to go and Terrific. find it you know, things like that are going to mentally stimulate them and are as equally as important as bringing them for their physical exercise as well. Yeah, you know, down in Tato Park now, um, we the, 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 the animals, they, they've got scents and the food, they hide the food, they just throw yeah. it out into the, the pounds of market. That's it. And the animals are going out foraging for it. And none of them are, are walking around with that stereotypic behavior. Yeah. That they're all kept yeah. busy. And they go yeah. and they look and they get the reward. They, they find the food and they have it and they yeah. come and eat it and then they're happy out, you know. That's it. It's trying Great. to simulate what they would yeah. naturally do in yeah. their own environment. And as you say, it avoids mm -hmm. stereotypies. And for pet dogs, it avoids then problem behaviours occurring. And, I mean, pet dogs do develop stereotypies, oh, chill tasting, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah, yeah. So that's it from Pet Talk TV for today. If you have any queries or emails, please send them to paulkellyvet.com. So that's it. Thank you and see you next time.